I'm writing about Art Basel online, mm -hmm. and I wanted to know what what is the strategy of Gagosian about this online fair this year. Well, what we've done for Basel, um, we've always had in the last few years a pretty strong online presence, but this year we actually made an appeal to a large number of our primary artists that we would like to do something a bit special. And they were very, very forthcoming, whether it was Boslitz or Mark Grosjean, or, I mean, Mary Weatherford. We had a, we've had a fantastic group respond. So the booth had an even, it, it's a more special event because we don't have the actual physical booth to, to use. And of course, artists by nature are somewhat art fair reverse. They, they find them rather like cattle calls and a rather harsh way to display their art. So oftentimes many of our artists are reluctant to participate in art fairs simply because it's not necessarily their aesthetic. But in this case, not having any kind of venue to actually show pictures um, and works of art, they were, they were much more open not only to the Basel online program, but a program we started right when the COVID lockdown began called Spotlight, where we would feature a new work by one of our artists every Friday, put it online for 48 hours, and repeat uh, the next week. And that's been extremely successful. Uh, mm. The most recent uh, iteration of that was Theaster Gates, and before that we've had Mary Weatherford and Mark Grosjean. So we've, we've had a, a really good run with uh, Sarah Z. We've had a great run with the, with the Spotlight series. It means you sold a lot? Yes, very much so, yes. And with the Basel online viewing room, we've sold quite a bit so far. Uh, but uh, again, Already runs... you sold? Sorry? You sold already? Yes. Before the opening of the, of the online fair project? Correct. We did two. We, did, we participated in the online fair project as well as our own online, on, our own online project. So our own online project went live on Friday. So that's been very successful. So it means your best client have a preview? Yes, the preview gets sent out, but now the entire public can see it. And if you go on our website, uh, it's easy to access the entire um, the things we're offering. And how many, how many artists is there? Oh man, I can't even remember. There must be at least, uh, in terms of the primary, there must be at least 25, maybe more. And what, what's the range of prices? Uh, the, the range of prices for the primary work, um, I would say, for the most part, it's, it's pretty much in the realm of under, under five million by nature. And the average price, probably somewhere close to a million. Um, I mean, the, the artists that gave us work were people like you know, Kiefer and Mark Grosjean and the Frankenthaler estate, Joe Bradley, Boslitz, uh, Murakami, Albert Olin, Sterling Ruby, um, Nathaniel Mary Quinn, uh, Ed Richet, Richard Serra. So we, we had a, we've had a pretty good panoply of, of those people we represent. Uh, and, for in example, the, in, in the, and for example, Kiefer normally never gives something for a fair. Correct. So that's a real Absolutely exception, correct. and um, yeah. but don't you think it's expensive for for an online market one million dollars? We've had success. I think I think most people would agree that the online market is relatively successful, anywhere from the mid three hundreds to an average of about a million and a half dollars. Uh, I think the five million mark is is somewhat of an exception, but we've had we've had success at that level also. But this test will be, I think, very much in evidence when the auctions occur at the end of June and July, when you have a number of objects that are priced vastly in excess of $5 million that people have not seen, uh, yeah. that people will have to buy on the assurance of you know, a digital platform or, or a recommendation, a written condition report, etc. cetera. Um, for instance, Christie's has a beautiful, very rare... Ed Richet painting called Annie, 
But that painting has been in a private collection for over 30 years, has not been seen by anybody in 30 years. Wow. If you take the, exam if you take the example of the bacon at Sotheby's, that's a painting that had been on the market for a while. It's been in many museum exhibitions. So there's a much more familiarity with actually seeing that object than you have with the Rocher, because that Rocher hasn't been seen in public in such a long time. It's going to be very hard, I think, to take that, take that leap of faith um, to purchase something of that level without physically seeing it. What about the Rocher? What, from what year is it? Uh, the Rocher that's coming up at Sotheby's, it's 1962, e and e the title is No, Annie. it's Christie's, right? Oh, it's, I'm sorry, it's Christie's, you're correct. And uh, what's the estimate, you remember? I think it's, I don't know if it's published yet, but I think it's going to be 20 to 25 or 20 to 30, I'm not sure. Ah, wow. And uh, how, what's your feeling about the art market in a few months? How do you imagine it in October, November? I think, well, I hope it's going to be what you've begun to see in Hong Kong and in Europe with gradual reopenings, a very limited scope, of a lot of strictures and plans in place to keep attendance limited, to keep people safe. But I think that Amer you know, the New York galleries and the Los Angeles, etc., I hope we can get to a point where we, where we can also have a limited population come in, do exhibitions, because the, the artists we represent are not, their, their creative process is not stopping because of COVID-19. Uh, in fact, many of them are sort of in a position where they're actually focused even more on their work because they're basically trapped in their studios and there are very, there are very few distractions other than making art. So providing a platform for them is, is I think, paramount Um, so we still have a very vital exhibition plan going forward, and I hope, particularly in America, we can put that into action. It just depends on how New York State, for instance, um, there's a phase, there are four phases to reopening New York City, for instance, and phase one has just begun. Phase two, because of a lot of the recidivism, may be pushed back, and they're listing arts organizations like museums, galleries, etc., in phase four. So we don't even know when phase four will occur. Um, so we're hoping that we can have a limited presence during phase two, but that means very limited attendance by appointment only. And uh, did you notice some uh, uh, new kind of creativity from some of the artists, things related to this new world? I don't think... We haven't seen much that's actually related to the COVID issue, but I think that artists feel this in ways that aren't necessarily translatable into explanations um, that are literal. So I definitely, when I, when I have conversations with artists, a lot of this is, is weighing very heavily on their mind, but it's not necessarily translating into, say, political work or work having to do with COVID specifically. But yes, and this kind of worldwide crisis has an enormous effect, just like the, the civil unrest of the last few weeks has weighed on artists of all creed, color, variety, because it's, it's a social phenomenon that's, that's taken hold and so deeply that you cannot but be, un, be affected by, by this kind of you know, unrest on, on this kind of scale. Yes, okay. But you have not noticed something really new in their in their way of no. expressing themselves. No, I think it's I think it's too early. I mean, literally, the lockdown began in America first week in March, and I think you know these ideas and this kind of feeling. I mean, if you look at art that's come about through you know plague, I mean, if you look at Boccaccio or look at Chaucer, I mean, this is something that it's reflective of its time, and yet. I think these. I think many of these artists are absorbing this kind of emotion. Uh, how it will come out eventually uh, remains to be seen. But I, I think they're all feeling uh, empathy and sympathy and trying to get a full grasp of, of just how dramatically the world has changed in the last 90 days. Yeah, that's crazy, right? Very impressive. Yeah. 